leadership. And I would yield the floor. Madam President. The Senator from South Dakota. Madam President, I want to thank my colleague uh, from Oregon, Senator Wyden, for his continued leadership on this issue. And I do want to mention, because he did when he, in, his, in his first remarks, uh, echo what he said about uh, our departing colleague, Senator Rockefeller. I have had the opportunity to serve as uh, his ranking Republican on the Senate Commerce Committee and have really enjoyed uh, serving with him during his chairmanship and learned a lot. He's someone who has uh, great experience here, uh, 36 years in the Senate. Uh, I've been here now for 10, so I have a lot to learn from, uh, from people like Senator Rockefeller. And, um, and we did some good things together. We just recently here got through the Senate a cybersecurity bill that the Commerce Committee had passed earlier this year. Uh, satellite television reauthorization this year, which had ended up being, it's always somewhat controversial to move that legislation, but we were successful in getting that ultimately uh, enacted this year. Uh, we moved a, a STB reauthorization bill, Surface Transportation Board, that had some rail reforms in it out of the Commerce Committee, unfortunately didn't get it considered here on the floor of the Senate, but had hearings on numerous issues that are under the jurisdiction of the Commerce Committee. And uh, I appreciate so much uh, Chairman Rockefeller's leadership, his service here. Uh, like him, I come from a small state. We shared a lot of things in common, came from small communities, and uh, represented uh, people who work hard, uh, just want a fair break, want to make sure that uh, the people they elect to represent them in Washington, D.C. are staying focused on the issues that are important to their livelihood. And so I, I appreciate his, uh, his leadership on those issues. And I have to say that uh, he stands tall among our colleagues. Um, I think he probably has the distinction as being the tallest United States senator. Uh, the senator from Oregon, Senator White, and I are not far behind. Um, but if uh, Senator Rockefeller ever stood up all the way, I think he'd have us by, by several inches. And so the tall guy caucus here in the United States Senate uh, will be uh, less represented when Senator Rockefeller departs. And I've always enjoyed his sense of humor and the way in which uh, uh, he approaches the job and uh, the passion that he feels for public service. And uh, so we wish him well in his retirement and thank him for a, a long and distinguished career here in the United States Senate. Uh, I want to say uh, to my colleague from Oregon that he is, as he mentioned earlier, he was the pioneer on this issue. You go back to 1998 when he worked with former Congressman Chris Cox, and that was the original Internet Tax Freedom Act. And I'm hopeful that both our permanent bill, which the Senator Wyden mentioned, the ITFA bill, and our Digital Goods Services Tax Fairness Act can be considered as early as possible in the next Congress. And uh, the Senator from Oregon, Senator Wyden, is the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, a very powerful committee here uh, in the Congress, and uh, will continue his leadership uh, in the next session of Congress as the uh, ranking Democrat on that committee, and so he'll be a very influential voice on all of these issues, uh, tax matters, trade matters, health care matters. Uh, the, the Finance Committee has a very broad jurisdiction, but it's really important that we get this part right. You know, if you look at what um, most Americans have dealt with when it comes to Internet service, they've not been taxed on Internet access for 16 years due to the Internet Tax Freedom Act moratorium that Senator Wyden and Senator Cox were able to get instituted back in 1998. That moratorium's been extended three times, and it's been critical to the rapid growth of the Internet. But all this would change if we allowed the Internet Tax Freedom Act to expire. Now, we were able to get through the end of this next fiscal year, which will be September 30th of next year, an extension of the moratorium. But the fact of the matter is, uh, Madam President, as Senator Wyden has mentioned, we need permanency with regard to this tax policy. We need certainty. We need predictability. We need people in this country to know, uh, American families to know, that uh, they're not going to be hit with a substantial tax as a result of the lapse of this particular piece of legislation. If you look at what it could do to the average American family, the average state uh, telecommunications tax rate is roughly 12 percent. So imagine a married couple with two children where everyone in the family has a phone with a $50 data plan. Well, currently, the Internet Tax Freedom Act prevents taxes on this data plan in states that didn't have these taxes prior to the law's enactment, enactment which, is, which is a large majority, really, of the states. But if this law expires, this family of four would be likely to see at least a $20 increase in their monthly phone bill, meaning a tax increase of more than $200 a year. Now, 
For families struggling to make ends meet, as Senator Wyden pointed out, this is real money. And this tax increase would not just be bad for American families and American consumers, it would also be bad for the American economic, for American economic competitiveness, because we know that higher costs for the deployment of high-speed internet will mean a slower rollout of this technology. This is especially the case in rural America, where the cost of deploying high-speed internet service is often much higher than in urban or suburban areas. By keeping the cost of internet access as low as possible, we help to encourage the continued use of the internet as a source of economic growth, creativity, and entrepreneurship. And as the incoming chairman of the Senate Commerce Committee, I'm committed to increasing internet co connectivity in this country. And whether it's through the Universal Service Fund, by getting additional spectrum into the hands of the private sector, or by providing regulatory certainty to encourage broadband build out, our committee is going to be looking at all available options to make sure more Americans have access to high quality internet. Unfortunately, if the federal government allows new taxes to be levied on internet access, we risk canceling out our other efforts to get more Americans online. Madam President, this just doesn't make any sense. We all need to be growing, or I should say we all need to be rowing in the same direction if our country is going to be connected and engaged in the expanding internet ecosystem. Now, earlier this year, the House of Representatives, as Senator Wyden pointed out, by voice vote, passed a bill to make the Internet Tax Freedom Act permanent, which is a very positive step forward. I'm hopeful that next year we will move on a much longer-term extension of ITFA, as well as other measures that promote the digital economy, such as the Digital Goods Services Tax Fairness Act that I mentioned earlier. As incoming chairman of the Commerce Committee and as a member of the Tax Writing Finance Committee, I'm looking forward to a new agenda next Congress, one that's optimistic and forward-leaning. It's an agenda that recognizes that the dy dynamism in our economy today should not be a source of concern, but rather a source of opportunity for jobs, for growth, and for economic freedom. In my view, this agenda begins with support for the Internet Tax Freedom Act. And that is why, Madam President, I am pleased that the bill that we just passed Saturday evening extends the Internet Tax Freedom Act through September of 2015 so that we can have a debate next year about how we promote the Internet economy with all of its benefits on a much more permanent basis. I look forward to working with my colleague from Oregon, Senator Wyden, and senators on both sides who I think care deeply about this critical issue moving forward early in the next Congress. As the Senator from Oregon mentioned, uh, there are, I think, half of the members of the United States Senate who are co-sponsors of this bill. That suggests to me, obviously, that there is broad bipartisan support for what we're talking about doing here. And I also look forward to working with uh, Senator Wyden uh, on other issues that are important to the di digital economy, digital trade is something that he and I have partnered on in the past as well. And as we look at the trade agreements that are currently being negotiated, uh, the TPP as well as the TTIP trade agreements with Europe, all need to include important protections for the digi digital economy. It is one of the areas in our economy where we actually have a trade surplus. Because of American ingenuity and know-how and creativity and innovation, we continue to lead the world in this area. And we need to make sure that we not only are protecting, uh, putting in place the important safeguards here in this country against taxing these services, but also ensuring that we have access to other markets around the world where we know uh, American know-how and American ingenuity and creativity can lead the way. And so I look very much forward in the next Congress to working, uh, to continuing to work with my colleague from Oregon on these important matters so that we can continue to see uh, Middle-income families in this country benefit from the gains in productivity that come, the uh, hopefully higher standard of living, uh, higher take-home pay, better wages, better job opportunities that come with a robust, vibrant digital economy that, uh, that enables uh, our broader economy 
to continue to make great gains. So, Madam President, I thank uh, the, the, the Senator from uh, Oregon, Senator Wyden, for his leadership on this issue, both past and present, and I look forward to working with him uh, as we uh, try in the future to make sure that those gains are protected and that we, that we move even farther in the direction of, uh, of economic freedom when it comes to uh, the Internet.